New at 5 tonight, the future of our food. Imagine eating a hamburger made of real beef, but no cow was killed to make it. We're not talking about veggie burgers. We're talking about real meat that's grown in a lab. And students in Massachusetts are working at the forefront of the science. 12 News reporter Kim Kalunian went to their lab to learn more and find out when it could end up on your dinner plate. Kim? Well, they call it cellular agriculture, and scientists hope it's the way of the future, as does a Rhode Island man who used to make his living slaughtering pigs. But it's not for everyone, and it's already been banned in two states. What's inside these test tubes could be your next cheeseburger. Cellular agriculture essentially involves um, creating foods, particularly meats, protein-rich foods like meats, without needing the animal itself. Are you essentially growing a steak in a Petri dish? So generally, we're not directly growing the steak in a Petri dish. Generally, what we're doing is first growing cells. David Kaplan is the director of the Center for Cellular Agriculture at Tufts University, and his students are trying to figure out how to put a chicken breast or a filet mignon on your plate without ever slaughtering an animal. All edible ingredients, all safe ingredients, and all created without overprocessing, yet with great taste, nutrition, and overall texture. The science is only about a decade old. In 2013, scientists in Europe unveiled the first lab-grown hamburger to the tune of about $300,000. It took a reported three months to produce a single patty. The goal now is to bring down the cost and crank up the speed and the scale to feed the masses. This is just such a, a, a natural, obvious thing to do. Davide Dukovic ran his family's Rhode Island-based prosciutto business, Daniele, before selling it about five years ago. He says they'd go through hundreds of millions of pounds of pork each each year. It always bothered me that we had to slaughter these animals to, uh, to make the product. So much so that um, when that movie Babe would come on, <laughs> um, I, I'd always have to change the channel just because I, it made me really sad. So when he heard about cellular agriculture and the program at his alma mater Tufts, he donated $1 million to the study of so-called cultivated meat. Dukovic wasn't the only investor excited about the burgeoning industry. According to a study by the Good Food Institute, private donors poured more than $3 billion into cultivated meat companies from 2010 to 2022. Dukovic got to try a piece of lab-grown salmon in Boston this past spring, but it's hard to come by. Making it is an expensive and time-consuming process. At Tufts, it starts with a muscle biopsy, and then those cells are isolated. Once they've grown well under small-scale conditions, we can then move them to something like a two-liter bioreactor and scale up the cell mass. Those cells could eventually be put into something like this, a bioprinter, and made into essentially ground beef. At this rate, you'd have one hamburger per year. And so Kaplan's students are busy trying to find the next big break in this field. In the long run, my vision is we're going to create a palette of foods that people have never tried. You know, we'll look back on these days as why were we so limited on what we were eating? And while Kaplan is hopeful lab-grown meat will end up in everyone's refrigerators someday, not everyone is convinced. Take your fake lab-grown meat elsewhere. We're not doing that in the state of Florida. Florida and Alabama have already banned it. Coming up new at 6, we'll take a look at why and where you could one day try some for yourself. I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News. Now, the future of our food. At five, we told you how students at Tufts University are on the forefront of finding ways to grow real meat we can eat in a lab without ever killing an animal. But the industry and the science are facing challenges and pushback. New at six, 12 News reporter Kim Kalunian found out why it may be a while before this meat makes it to your plate. Kim? The process of growing meat in a lab starts at a small scale, literally microscopic. So how can you produce enough to feed the masses? It's a question a lot of people in this burgeoning industry are trying to answer. At this Tufts University lab, David Kaplan is teaching his students about cellular agriculture, a field where meat for consumption is not taken from a living animal, but is instead grown inside test tubes and bioreactors, with the eventual goal of putting a piece of chicken like this, entirely grown in a lab, on your dinner plate. 
Take your fake lab-grown meat elsewhere. We're not doing that in the state of Florida. It's not for everyone. And Florida Governor Ron DeSantis and Alabama Governor Kay Ivey both took steps last month to ban it in their states. And in the state of Florida, we've put down the marker very clearly. Uh, we stand with agriculture. We stand with the cattle ranchers. And that's not the only hurdle the industry is facing. This AP NORC poll last year found few adults are interested in eating cultivated meat. Some think it just sounds weird. Weird. Others worry it might not be safe. Anybody who's coming out and saying this food is not safe is not correct, number one, and there's no basis for saying that. Number two, anybody that comes out and says you're going to you're going to lose farm jobs or livestock farms is incorrect as well. In the long run, the way we're talking about things, we're going to create opportunities and jobs. In 2022, two U.S. companies, Good Meat and Upside Foods, both secured FDA approval for their cultivated chicken, and in 2023, Certain restaurants offered limited quantities of the meat. That's been paused. And now Good Meat is selling one of its products in Singapore. But it's only 3% animal cells. The rest is things like soy and wheat. Figuring out how to make enough lab cultivated meat from 100% animal cells has proven tricky for companies and scientists. The problem is scaling it and commercializing it and making it mainstream. Um, they haven't figured that part out yet. So as of now, you know, even though you can make it, it's, it's very, very expensive to do. Davide Dukovic spent years running his family's Rhode Island-based prosciutto business, Daniele, before he sold it about five years ago. And now he's invested a million dollars into the cellular agriculture program at Tufts. Where do you hope the industry is in five years or in 10 years? Yeah, that's the million dollar question, Kim. He's hopeful cultivated meat is the way of the future, though he knows the journey there likely won't be easy or fast. This personal journey of mine will hopefully come to a conclusion once I can finally eat my first slice of cell ag prosciutto. And hopefully that, that, that'll be in my lifetime. So when will you be able to eat a piece of lab grown meat in the U.S.? It's a bit hard to say, but Upside Foods is hosting a public tasting event in Miami this week, just days before Florida's ban goes into place. I'm Kim Kalunian, 12 News.